Welcome to the tutorial on analog inputs in which we're going to be focusing on extracting a voltage signal which is going to be from 0 to 5 volts into our 1769-IF8 card which you can see on your screen right now and this is a card which I've showcased in one of my vlogs previously and I've gotten a lot of questions about discussing how to wire this in as well as how to configure the card as well as the inputs in Studio 5000. So we're going to be looking at those concepts and more and without any further delay, let's just ro jump right into it. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So we've done this a couple of times in the past but if I scroll down in my current PLC program you will notice that I have this embedded discrete IO module and underneath there is essentially nothing in the extension IO and the extension IO is what's going to allow us to communicate with the modules which are going to be on the extension bus of the L24 ER processor. So what I'm going to have to do is first I'm going to save the program I'm going to upload all the tags, make sure that I have the latest and greatest program before I go offline and start modifying. So we are definitely live with the processor. I'm going to click go offline. And once I'm here, I can right click the expansion IO, I can click new modules. And from here, I will need to select the exact card that I have in my chassis right now. So I'm going to just type in 1769 dash if8 and in case you're not familiar with the numbering what you can do is essentially once you disassemble the hardware you can pull out this side module and you can see the label on the side i've shown this in a couple of videos but essentially you can find the same catalog number on the side of the module you can also do an alternatively if you go into rs links classic light you can click on your module scroll down to the network of your choice and the plc that i've given essentially the ip address to 192.168.1.11 is going to be my l24 er if i expand this and expand the compact bus you will notice that this is going to be the channel analog module and if i right click and go into device properties I will first of all be able to see the uh, revision number but I can also go into right click and then see uh, I believe it's driver diagnostics there's there's a way to essentially see what kind of a card it is let's see here yeah so I guess you, you can't see I'm not sure why it's not labeled 1769-IF8 but from the analog display as well as the fact that there's eight of them you can pretty much determine that that's the card that's really strange that it's not displaying the full uh, catalog number in here but in any case we're going to go back into our uh, studio 5000 and what we're going to do is we're going to select the module i'm going to hit create here i'm just going to give it a name which is going to be i'm going to call it local analog in and usually I like to go by the slot number. So remember that the PLC is essentially in slot one. This is going to be slot two. The revision number is going to be the same as we just saw in RS links. So 1.001 is perfectly fine. We can definitely give it a description, but we're just going to hit OK so that we can see the module in the expansion I.O. Since we don't have anything else in that rack, we're just going to close out of this menu. And you'll notice that the slot number two, which is that card, has appeared right here. So once again, that's a 1769-IF8. And if we go into the properties, we can configure a lot of this online. But what I do want to mention is, first of all, the requested packet interval or RPI is going to how frequently you want to pull this card for data. Usually the default value is fine. If you have some kind of a high speed application, then maybe you need to change this to a lower value. If you care a little bit less, if you have, for example, a very slowly changing status or an analog sensor, which doesn't require that much reading, you can change this to a higher number. In any case, what we're going to be dealing with is with eight different channels. This card, if you flip over the slot, you will notice that there's going to be a wiring scheme for all eight of them. You can also refer to the wiring manual in order to understand how it's going to be wired in. So if I 
pull this on the screen right now. Here's the Compact IO 1769 IF8. And if you go into the field wiring connections, which we're going to be doing in just a moment, you can see the different schemes depending on whether you have a voltage or a current transmitter, how they need to be wired in the field. So do take note that your wiring might be different than what I'm going to show you. That being said, we do need to enable the channel that we're going to use. And since we're only going to do one of them, we're just going to enable channel zero. And the input range is one of the most important selections here. So depending on the flavor of analog cards, you may not have all these options. Some of them are going to be focused on voltage alone, on current alone, or vice versa, or both of them, just like it is in the case of IF8. So because we're going to be working with the 0 to 5 volt signals, we're going to select that range. Do note that you can still use the 0 to 10 volt range, but you're essentially going to lose in a little bit of accuracy. So you want to select what's essentially useful for you and based on your specifications. The data format, we're going to look at this a little bit later too. For now, we're just going to leave it in raw slash proportional. I'm going to hit on apply and alarms. We're not going to mess with that in this tutorial. I'm going to hit OK. And here I need to download to the PLC since we've made a major change. So I'm going to select download. And of course, it's going to give me a warning that we are going to download to a live PLC. Hit download and then once we are online, the card should display as correct. And it already has the OK status, as you can see at the top here. So we're assuming that everything's OK. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit on how I'm going to generate the analog signal that we're going to use in order to test our card. So in the screen, you can also see this little HMI screen, which is actually coming from the it's coming from a direct click PLC, so automation direct click. And here I've programmed a very simple routine. And essentially all you need to understand is that from this little menu on the bottom left hand side, I can select this zero value and I can type in how many, what percentage of the zero to five volt range I will select as an output. So for example, here, if it's showing 50, that means we're outputting 2.5 volts. And if I hit this clear and type in two, 20, for example, then it's going to be 20% uh, of the five volts, which essentially translates to two volts and so on and so forth. But that's not the focus of our tutorial for today. What I want you to focus on is going to be on the IF8 card. So that's going to be the uh, the concern of the discussion. But I just want you to understand how we're getting the voltages, which are going to be coming up in the Studio 5000. So let's do the wiring first, and then we're going to jump into the software right away. So the signal which is sent to us by the direct click PLC is going to be of differential voltage type, which means that we essentially have two wires, one which is going to be the negative and watch one which is going to be the positive. So it's going to be a fairly straightforward scheme. So let's just plug it into the PLC and see what we need to do next. So first of all, I'm going to land the common And next we have the positive signal, which is coming back from the same signal. So in this case, the wiring is not extremely complicated. Let's go back into Studio 5000, double check what kind of a value we're getting. And in order to do that, you'll notice that once we select different modules, so once I select this local analog input slot two, there's going to be tags like I've explained a couple of times before, but essentially they're going to come into local two I O and C. If we scroll up to the controller, double click the controller tags, go into monitor and then scroll down to local two. They should be all the way at the bottom local two input. And we're going to have different channels displayed here. So channel zero, channel one, two, three, four, all the way to channel seven. And those are going to be the eight channels coming in from our card. You'll notice that channel zero has currently this minus 15,700 value, which is fairly meaningless to us. As you remember, we are reading a zero to five volt signal. And at this point, if you look at the HMI from Automation Direct, it is currently set to 20%. So let's just calibrate that to set it to zero and see what happens. 
So at zero, we're reading minus 27,000. And if we go to 100%, then let's see, the value is going to be around 29,000, but it seems to be oscillating. So we're going to look into that as well. Let's just put it back to clear. Let's do 50. Press enter. So at 50, as you can see, the value is at around 1000. Now, there's going to be multiple ways to address this. But ultimately, what I prefer doing is if we go into the analog card, and we double click and go back into the configuration, instead of using this raw proportional data format, we're going to go into engineering units, I'm going to hit apply, hit yes, because essentially it is changing the scheme online. So do be careful if you change this on a live system, we're going to hit okay. And you'll notice that we have this value which is going to be essentially 2500 or so and it seems like we're just getting a little bit of noise it shouldn't be oscillating this much so i'm just going to double check the wiring it should be fairly steady at that reading i think everything is okay so that's not a big problem i think we need to also tie the common probably to zero so the common of the analog card should probably go to ground so i'm going to put that wire in and make sure that this value doesn't oscillate as you can see it goes from 22 to 2400 so let's just do that really quickly all right so i ended up doing just a little bit of debugging and essentially moving the wiring to channel one thinking at first that it might be oscillating because the channel on this specific card was not good anymore that wasn't the case it was actually the filter so what i did is i went into the settings for the card for the if8 and then i changed this filter to be 10 hertz instead of the 60 hertz i'm actually going to disable the channel zero which is which is no longer being used and at this point everything looks very very stable as you can see the value here is minus 27000 and once i change on this little hmi that you can see on your screen the numeric entry to be 100 percent then we're going to read minus 27000 which is uh Actually, once I mouse over from it, it's going to be 25,000. Now, where is this value coming from? Let's open the data sheet once again. And here's the a different sheet, which I also found online. And since we're in the setting, so here's the input range in the setting of a zero to five volts DC, you're going to have these different readings depending on which set point or which data you've selected on your card. So here's the raw proportional data, which as you remember, we're currently set to. And if we look in the zero to five volt DC range, you'll notice that at zero volts, we should get this zero. And then at five volts, we should, we should get this 31,206. Now, of course, there's going to be a little bit of a difference. That being said, it still doesn't make sense that we're getting 25,000. So let's go back into the configuration and double check what we're reading. So I'm going to actually let's see 50 hertz works a little bit better. I'm going to say yes, hit OK. And actually that uh, makes it oscillate quite a bit. Let's go back and change that to 10 hertz. And we're going to double check also what's the output on the on the other PLC, which is sending us the voltage. So I don't want you to read too much into the details of this program. But essentially, here's the click programming software. And from here, I can go into my setup and the built in IO. And what you'll notice is that the output that I'm using the zero to five output is currently sending out five VDC, which is exactly what we would expect. But we're still reading a value which is going to be less than the specified data sheet. So let's go back into the data sheet and see what is happening. So we're reading 27 thousand which i believe doesn't uh compute let's see here let's go back into studio twenty five thousand. so that's actually a bit less than what i would expect let's see if we can get a normal value in the engineering unit so let's go back into configuration and switch this to engineering units i'm going to hit apply yes all right so looking at the data sheet we can use a simple compute instruction in order to convert the values that we have right here into voltages that we would be expecting. So uh, the very simple math 
formula to convert this 5000 into 5 volts would be to simply divide by 1000 and at that point we should be able to receive the exact voltage at any range so of course this scale is going to be linear so at 3000 for example you should expect 3 3 volts dc at 2002 volts dc so on and so forth so let's switch to studio 5000 and demonstrate that principle i'm going to go into my main program and then inputs so th since this is an input, this would make sense to leave it in uh, this location. I'm going to drag out just any instruction. Here's an XIC and I'm going to change this to a CPT compute. So this is a mathematical formula instruction. And instead of uh, in the expression, I'm going to tell the instruction what to calculate in the destination is going to be where to send this value. So this, this is going to be channel one. Um, this is going to be voltage, volts, so let's call it like that. And the raw value, of course, is going to be, let's control tab back into this value. This is going to be the raw data, so channel one data, local to channel one data. So this just needs to be divided by 1000. So I'm going to put in this formula. So channel local to channel one data divided by 1000 is going to be the expression i'm going to right click channel one volts new and this is going to be of type real so let's put that as a real create and once we compile the program we will essentially get the voltage that we are reading on that input card now there's going to be some debugging to do as to why we're not getting the five volts that we're expecting and essentially i'm just going to go in with my digital multimeter and figure out if we're actually getting the five volts to this card or we're getting something less and figuring out what the voltage is. But essentially, if I go back to this little HMI, I can change the value here. So let's clear and let's try 20%, at which point we should be reading one volt and that's pretty close, so 0 0.995. If I clear that value once again and I put in 40%, so 40% of 5 volts is going to be 2. And we're reading something very close, so 1.947, so on and so forth. So I hope that explains how to use this analog card, how to process the voltage, and how to get the raw data into a form which is a little bit more understandable. And do keep note that, of course, I'm dealing with volts. You can also be dealing with currents. That being said, if you refer back to this manual, as long as you match it with the signal that you're getting, because depending on the sensors that you're using, depending on the data that's coming in, you might have different values and it might make more sense for you to use, for example, this raw proportional data, engineering units, scale for PID or percent full range. That being said, it doesn't impact the final calculation and you can always use the essentially the compute instruction to convert to a real value that you might understand in the field. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.